everyone and uh, welcome to another wildlife vlog so for my last video for uh, California trip I went to uh, Point Reyes National Seashore together with my uncle I've been there before and uh, how so great variety of wildlife there sea elephants bobcats coyotes elks lava owls and so yeah I really want to go there another time because I uh, I noticed that uh, I had the best wildlife watching of North America there from all the places that I've been. So yeah, to start off we went to the Sea Elephant Lookout and uh, yeah, saw some uh, great species there. So I hope you enjoy this video. The white crowned sparrow is very common at Point Reyes. However, they have been decreasing in numbers by 85% at the national seashore. This is because of habitat changes. Treplands have been conversed to dense Douglas fir forests. As you can guess, the sparrow prefers treplands. Red-throated loon is my favorite loon species there is because of its beauty. I had never seen red-throated loons in their summer plumage from up this close. Compared to other loons they can spring into flight without pattering on the water first. Which allows them to breed in smaller ponds than other loon species. They do breed in other lakes to where the other loon species might be present. The northern elephant seal has been absent from Point Reyes for about 150 years. In the early 1970s the first elephant seals were seen again. In the 1981 the first breeding pair was discovered and they have increased in number since then. You can see that this elephant seal is covering itself in sand. There are multiple reasons that it could do this, but scientists believe it's to regulate their temperature. Maybe it's even for camouflage, a non-sandy beach that cover themselves with seaweed among other stuff. Pigeon guillemot breed on the cliffs and the location is assumed to be chosen by the male. The nest will be above the high tide mark. They can be very opportunistic on their nests as they will breed in a lot of different kinds of nests. They mostly breed cliff crevices or gaps between boulders. They can also breed in holes under tree roots, old burrows of rabbits, abandoned buildings and a lot more. They are also capable of excavating their own burrow. They hunt underwater, they propel themselves with their wings and use their feet to steer. They feed on small fish and invertebrates. The 
So yeah, it was great to be back there. I saw some uh, nice animals, some nice wildlife, and uh, some great views of red-throated uh, loons, which is uh, definitely by far my most favorite species of loon. So really happy I saw those. And after this, uh, we went to the sea lion lookout. And this is uh, really nice. Last time I was there, you couldn't really see uh, that far because of the mist. Now got some great views of the sea lions. California sea lions are very social animals on land and in the sea. This will change during the breeding season as males will aggressively defend their territory. Females will be defensive against other females to protect their pups. Male sea lions bark like dogs to communicate as you can hear here. The vocalizations of the females and pups are identical to the individual. This is so they can recognize each other among hundreds of others. Their scents are also unique. Sea lions that you see on shore are mostly resting. They might also be nursing their pups. feed on the water hunting for a great variety of species. They feed for example squids, anchovies, mackerel, rockfish and sardines. The subspecies of elk you can find at Point Reyes are tule elk. Tule elk are endemic to California. In the mid-1800s, the numbers of tule elk decreased massively throughout California. This was due to uncontrolled hunting and displacement of cattle. In the mid-1870s, it was said that there were less than 30 individuals in one single herd. A conservation-minded cattle rancher discovered this herd as they were proved to be extinct in 1874. 
In 2020 it was estimated there are about 5,700 tule elk in 2020 herds throughout California. These are all descendants from the herd discovered in 1874. This is a male California quill, as most birds it's more beautiful than the female. It's got its distinctive black and white colors and has a bigger plump on its head. After we went to the lighthouse, uh, we went to, uh, to drive around a little bit to see what we could find. Some nice coyotes, some elk, and then we went to uh, Drake's Beach where we uh, could find some uh, nice ghost species. As the name might suggest, this girl can be distinguished by the ring around its bill. If there will be a bird triathlon, girls will be among the favorites to win. They can run, fly and swim very well. They are also very opportunistic as they will eat about almost anything they find. The Hermann's girl has a very distinguished look. It's overall pretty dark with a red bill. Breeding adults also have a pale head. Coyote is one of the most opportunistic animals on earth. It will eat almost anything that comes in its way from berries to deer. Even inside the borders of the San Francisco city limit there are at least a hundred coyotes. Only this can already show how well they are adapted to the concrete jungle. They look similar to wolves and a lot of people mistake coyotes for wolves. They are smaller than wolves and their howling is with a higher pitch. 
A coyote also has pointier ears and a longer snout, a wolf's kind of a coyote on steroids. Coy coyotes are also known as bruce wolf, little wolf and prairie wolf. Well, after that we went to grab some dinner, and after dinner we went back to have an evening hike at Abbott's Lagoon. And we went to we, we went there because in the area there were some sightings of, uh, of some uh, burrowing owl and badgers, and those are two species that I really wanted to see there, so that's why we went there. Great blue heron will hunt for almost anything that's within striking distance. Miss. Here it's called a very small fish. This fish was just a little snack. Besides fish, they will also feed on amphibians, reptiles, small mammals, insects and other birds. If you listen closely, you could hear one of the others make a squeaking sound. They are social animals and use sounds, touch and chemical signals for communication. This otter is taking a quick break from swimming to take some time for grooming. They're gonna go on land for grooming and drying. They hunt underwater in pairs or individually for aquatic animals. Their diet consists of fish, frogs, crayfish, turtles, insects and some small mammals. The social structures of the otters can vary greatly. Some prefer living solitary, but there are also family groups of a mother with her offspring and groups that consist of purely out of males. We didn't see any of those two species, but 
got some amazing views of some river otters, which was really great. And after that we went uh, to go for an, uh, an uh, evening drive, uh, in particular just to see if we could find a uh, bobcat. So uh, yeah, it's a really nice area, there's so much diversity of wildlife there at night, it's, it's crazy. You would assume of all other mammals that the flashing white and black pattern is not very tactical. As for the striped skunk, this is considered a warning. Even coyotes would back off from this strange animal. They will spray other animals and even humans if they come closer than their liking with smelling liquid. The primary chemicals in the stinky fluid are phials and phyosetates, which are both rich in sulfur. Unfortunately, we did not see any wildcats that night, but we saw about the 9 or 11 of total skunks, which is pretty great. You know, we don't have those in Europe, so it's really nice to see skunks. I uh, saw a couple of raccoons, but they were, it was too dark or they were too quickly gone. I guess some more coyotes, some uh, we saw uh, the great horned owl. And yeah, and then uh, we went uh, to bed, and then we only had one morning left. So that morning we really had to see the bobcat, because my uncle never saw one. And uh, he really wanted to see one, so I, I, I kind of promised him so, yeah, to get some luck to see it. Not even five minutes into the hike, but we got it, the bobcat. So I was really happy with that. Besides that, it was a pretty nice hike with, with some elk um, burrowing in the distance and even pretty up close. It was, uh, the weather wasn't too great, so it was pretty nice. But uh, that was kind of it. That was uh, the water watch in California. I hope you enjoyed and uh, in the end of April, the beginning of May, I'll be going to Finland with my dad. So uh, I'll be uh, filming a lot there, hoping to get some moose, bears, wolverines, 
got some plans. I also hope for, for rain, reindeer. So yeah, already got it all planned out. So I, uh, I hope we'll be successful. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take care.